Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about customizing our method that we created. Me.output in this situation is how we invoked it, but the actual method is defined inside of the class as output. And here is the body. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying this method to basically output a person's name numerous times. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So if we want this to output a person's name numerous times, there's numerous ways we can do that inside of our code. For one, we could, in our application that's calling this method, we could create a for loop that basically invokes numerous times this method. That's one way we could do it. But there's an alternative we could do is, and that is actually taking information as an argument. So what if we wanted to say five? We wanted to output the name five times. Yeah, it seems a little silly in this situation, like why would we wanna output our name five times? But if you generalize this to other use cases, Imagine you are creating a game, right? You might want to have a, an NPC announce something numerous times, or we might want to deal a certain amount of damage or whatever. We're basically parameterizing our methods to change how they work based on some input. And that's the true thing I'm trying to show here. This video is not on how to print a name numerous times. It's how to make a method more general. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our code of creating this method and we're going to take an argument into a parameter variable. And that's going to look like this. We'll just call it times and it's going to be of type int. And we can define the loop inside here. Now that's something you might have to decide. Do you want to put the loop on the outside and then just invoke a very simple method that that's totally fine. Alternatively, you can do it on the inside of the method and take that information as an argument into a parameter variable as we did here. So we'll use a for loop for this. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i less than times i plus plus. And then we'll take this information, and paste it right there. So now when we run this, you can see we get Caleb Curry, each one on a, a new line, we get a total of five times. So just to make sure you're very clear on the, the vocabulary, this here times is a parameter. You can hover over it and see parameter. In, in our program.cs, when we invoke this and we pass a value in, that's known as an argument. The five gets copied over into this variable here times, and that's used throughout this method. So that's your introduction to arguments and parameters and how to basically generalize a method to be a little bit more dynamic based on input. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about returns. So how we can return something back from a method. So hopefully you guys are excited. Be sure to check out the next video and subscribe.